not only are we playing recorded music, well, we've got some live music also. I was talking about uh, Kimmy Bitter and the Western tw- West, West Side Twang coming in here. And they are traveling around San uh, Texas and uh, headed out of, from Terlingua yesterday and made it to San Antonio on time. Kimmy Bitter, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? What? Oh, yeah. Operator malfunction. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, I want to say uh, she is, well, actually, there was a little blurb about you in the newspaper today about things to do this weekend. And they talk about you being the retro country sort of sound deal. And I like this quote from uh, Saving Country Music. They say the future of country is classic and the future of classic country is Kimmy Bitter. (laughs) Trigger. Yes. That's good. It is good. It's a. It was a very bold statement, and I'm I'm honored. <laughs> now you got to live up to it. I know. Geez, the stakes are high now. <laughs> yeah, Kimmy and the band are traveling around. She's got a new release coming out at the end of the month called Old School, and I guess it's a project that's been in the works for a while. Yes, we. Um, I mean, we've been working. I've been in the studio for the past. Uh, I started it a little over a year ago, studio-wise, but um, the first song that kind of led to the album is a song called My Grass is Blue, and I released that in 2022 and um, didn't really have any following when I released that song, and then Saving Country Music had posted it, and then they had later uh, nominated it for their single of the year alongside really massive artists like Charlie Crockett and Sierra Farrell and uh, 49 Winchester, That's Zach Bryan. Bryan. Um, and then there was little old me. And that was kind of what um, he had. He had sent me trigger of saving country music, like a little message on the side. And he was like, Hey, you should probably make an album like this. I think it would do really <laughs> well. And I was like, well, if he's telling me to make an album, maybe I should run with that. So um, the guy I wrote My Grass is Blue with and produced that song, we decided let's do an album. So we wrote a whole bunch of songs together and we try to just pick the top ones. And we've been working on the album for the past year and a half. And I had to finally like finish it, say, OK, it's done. It's good enough. Let's move on. And uh, and so here we are. So now it's about to release at the end of this month. Well, it's uh, the music industry or biz. It's it's weird. It's like you can be a musical, the musical guest on Saturday Night Live and only have one song. You don't even have an album yeah. out. <laughs> and you can be like, oh, and then later on, she's finally putting an album out, somebody, <laughs> you know, yeah. but you've made it to national tv so it's uh there's no straight path like everybody has a different way they can get there and then i've heard something i just recently that people are remixing their songs and they're speeding them up have you heard that i Uh, have not heard maybe that wouldn't fit with what you're doing these (laughs) days but uh yeah our cow punk yeah who knows you know (laughs) yeah so it's it's uh well you're sort of doing it yourself correct I am, yeah. We're fully independent, and uh, I mean, no one's going to make my dream happen except for myself, so I just do as much as I can. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. We'll talk more about the business end of this music (laughs) industry in a bit. Why don't you uh, tell us who you've got with you in the West Side Twang. Yeah, so I've got Willis, who plays guitar. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. And we've got Ben Neal on the upright bass. Hi there. And uh, I've been playing with these guys for about 10 years, so they've been with me through like the entire journey. <laughs> well, I did check. Uh, sounds like uh, Ben's the guy that's been with you one way or another in one in- on one instrument or the other for yeah, quite a long time. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, Ben has been like the traveling musician man, the utility <laughs> guy. He's been on <laughs> drums. He's been on electric guitar. 
He's mostly been on bass, and you've been on keys as well. I kind of just throw you over. I need you. So. Um, yeah, like she said, just utility. It was whatever she needed. I just fit oh, that Oh, there you go. <laughs> can you fix the tire, too? Yeah. He can. Yeah, he's very mechanical. Sure. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He's a handyman as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Oh, yeah, we haven't said. You guys are playing tonight at the Lonesome Rose. We I are. think... Nine yes. o'clock, nine thirty. Nine o'clock, yes, yeah. Nine o'clock. Uh-huh. So, are you gonna have any of the CD yet, or is that even a? a is... I have. You know what? Because I'm doing it all independently, I just follow my own rules, and I am gonna have the CDs there, even though the album's not released. But I figure. We'll just consider it a pre-order. Turn it into gas money. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> Sell that baby. That's Sell right. Sell that musical baby. Please, please. We're talking to Kimmy Bitter and West Side Twang playing tonight over at the Lonesome Rose, traveling through Texas in uh, support of the upcoming release called Old School. Um, like, I, yeah, I did notice that the uh, that one album, that one song came out and well, there was a video i guess there's quite a few videos right yeah and what i understand willis is yeah. that you do a lot of the video work yeah kimmy i mean kimmy and i were touring for a couple of years just with us too and so it's like i mean a couple of days ago i was like i like this is our team guys like we're a three-person team and it's like i take care of all, all the video work so all like the music video and, and you take your work. like my personal photographer too yeah and then <laughs> yeah and i got a photo cred in the san antonio uh paper today so. oh, you did. yeah <laughs> Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just that we had to like, I I tell people it's like we had to get it done. And it's just like if we're not hiring people like I mean, we also work on a budget. So it's like I learned I had some film skills beforehand, but like bought a nice camera and like kind of started filling some more shoes. And now making, I'm sure there's more to some of those videos than I know. But some of those, it looks like you just pulled off the side of the road and said set up in a feel somewhere oh yeah. totally yes <laughs> there's like, yeah. yeah i mean there's a there's a few of those or maybe it was a series yeah, was, yeah i don't know exactly yeah. what that was I, yes there's a couple like live ones where that was we, it where you're just sort of uh-huh the we weeds just, are all around yes exactly we did that just a couple days ago in big ben we set up and we we have solar on the van so we're able to like power the amp and the equipment and we just record a live thing it all started because I did one in um, Georgia, in Georgia, and we did "Take Me Home, Country Roads," and it like got it it got a little taste of going viral, and we're like, well, let's just keep doing a couple of these. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of a funny video because it's like kind of before we really solidified our 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 style, and so I'm wearing like a stained like beer brewery t-shirt we didn't expect and, like, it to get views. sandals, yeah, and then all of a sudden, like I don't know, I got like sixty thousand hits or something over. The- over the course of a couple of years and but yeah we just yeah. pull over and it's what it looked co- like yeah, that's well that's what it is that's <laughs> what it is and i thought but of course then a the, uh, couple of a few of the videos like that aquamarine and uh my grass is blue of course those videos are pretty retro looking it yeah. works yeah the aquamarine one we we shot on a super eight film we only had nine minutes of film oh, to work r- with really and we had to go send it in to get developed and that was like five hundred dollars to get like the super eight film developed can't they but, don't they have a effects that you can do yeah. yes <laughs> but i i just uh we had I a just, friend nothing who, is yeah. as good as the real deal to yeah. me <laughs> so quit bitching about the five hundred dollars <laughs> yeah jeez Anyway, we're talking to Kimmy Bitter and the West Side Twang playing tonight over the Lonesome Rose. Um, um, now, what I understand is, for a while, you lived in Nashville. No, we we. Or you I mean, we hung out. You. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time in Nashville. We've kind of just lived. Willis and I lived in a van for a yeah. a while, um, a, several months at a time, maybe six or so months at a time, yeah. and quite a few of those months we would be in Nashville. Or at least dipping in there rather frequently. So, yeah. Did you, was there a goal for doing that or just seeing, feeling, feeling out the scene there or? Uh... Um, I think, well, that's like the country music capital. So that's the reason we kept uh... dipping in there. But, um, I mean, we just, we just never stopped touring. I, I mean, the goal was to just Keep, hustle. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, Nashville is sort of a, if you're cruising all over the country, it's sort of a centrally located. It's definitely located. centralized. Yeah. 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 We spent a lot of time in the South. And so that was kind of the place we kept going back to because yep. it has a lot going on. 
Right, so. exactly, exactly. So, and I hate to say it, I don't know if I, I, I what I would say is what you, your style of music is country, mm -hmm. but Nashville calls country. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit, uh, I mean, if you turn the sound down on a, on a uh, country, uh, commercial country video now, you'll think you're looking at a rock too. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got their uh, Les Pauls and everything and jamming. Yeah, yeah it's, like, so, it's like soft rock. Yeah. Like, and they're like, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's, uh, like, it's got a sound that, I don't, yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, it's funny because, like, the music I do, I guess, is called alternative country, but to me it's the country roots. <laughs> it's so, so funny. But Nashville has a huge, massive mainstream top 40 pop country thing. I don't really dabble in that. They also have a huge Americana scene as well. Not as big as their top 40 one, but they they still have got this huge Americana um, alternative country scene going on there too. Um, places like Honky Tonk Tuesday at the American mm -hmm. Legion. And, and so we kind of circled around that more. Yeah, that's fun. That's yeah, super so fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, super fun. Well, can you dabble in some music for us here? Sure. I sure. know there's a guitar around here somewhere. There is. Let's do old school. Okay. Any, any setup to this? This song? Um, any, you know, what it's about? Is it a deep meaning? Um, it's not a deep meaning. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. uh, I mean, it's the title track to my album. And uh, I I have an obsession with the 60s and old school music. And so um, I co-wrote this f song with my producer, Mike Gurley. And we wrote a song simply just about how much I love old school music. And, uh, and I want to go back there. So this is a song called Old School. I'm just a dang fool for that old school. Take me back to the tried and true. Sound of rhythm and blues. I tell you, old school makes my old soul feel brand new.
toe tapper. <laughs> yeah. That's a toe tapper for sure. That is Kimmy Bitter and the West Side Twang. Coming all the way from Southern California. Coming to uh, San Antonio tonight at the Lonesome Rose. And uh, touring around. That's the title cut of the upcoming release that you might be able to buy this evening over at the Lonesome Rose. Um, um, your clothes bu- budget. You, you have a lot of retro. <laughs> I, I don't. You, you're, you're a radio promoter. And have you met her before, Angela? Had you? Um, I've only met her through um, email and telephone. Yeah, I stayed she, she with... She just moved back to Australia. Yeah, so her I and I her. stayed with them, her and her husband, Al, and uh, she's got a ma- major uh, clothes closet for sure, retro Ooh, clothes yes. closet stuff. More uh, And uh, yeah, I thought maybe that's how you guys hooked up together, was <laughs> through the, some kind of same closet. envious clothes hey, habit, something like that. There could be something there. Now, is some of that clothes, is it... Uh, is it is it old? Is it old stuff, or is it? Uh... None of that I'm wearing is old. I just try to find gems wherever I can. Um, normally, just on the internet and searching. I, I'm, I get. I'm really. I have a somewhat of obsessive personality. So with um, the '60s, I love the fashion so much, and I spend time just like looking. What did they wear? What did they wear? And then I try to find it. On in modern day time to the you know there's there's a lot of uh, retro style clothing companies that are they're new they're not um, right. thrifty but and the lot there's a lot of them in Australia and so I do buy quite a bit of clothes in Australia and I have it shipped here and uh, and then I you know you wait your your six weeks for it to go through customs and all that and when it comes it's all exciting and if it's the wrong size you're like darn I gotta return <laughs> it and do the whole shebang again <laughs> now um y'all live in San Diego or near there or well, yeah I can be in our base out of Oceanside and then uh, Oceanside it's San Diego County it's about an hour from like San Diego proper but mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, I've only visited San Diego once Big deal was there was beer, of course, uh, yeah. Yeah. and burritos. Oh, like, burritos! Burritos! Are those California burritos are like everywhere, at least yes. down the San, uh, San Diego area, uh-huh. so whatever. And of course, plenty of craft beer. And you guys uh, had a beer or a brewery made a beer? Yeah, with something. Yeah, what's the story with that? Yeah, Northern Pine Brewing um, is a local brewery in Oceanside, and um, they. We had we have upgraded since, but we had our original tour rig was this old yellow van with like these long horns on, you know, mounted to the front of it. And we used to shotgun. We'd pierce the beer cans with the long horns and then we'd shotgun. It became this thing. And then so uh, we ma- we paired up with the brewery and we made the most shotgunnable beer, a nice, easy drinking beer. And it had like a little hole where you had to hit the bullhorn and instructions on how to shotgun. And so we that vi- the beer was called the Colonel and the van's license plate was called the Colonel. We don't really remember why we named the van that, but <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. And it uh, <laughs> is it uh, gone to rest? It has. It's a sore subject. I loved that van, but well, the new van is quite an upgrade. What I, un- I did listen to some rev- uh, interview where you said you've got a new van and it was yes. in the shop. Oh, gosh, yeah. How can, wow, what you've is really that a- done your homework. Well, you know, yeah. um, I don't do much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, yeah, it, within the, we must be cursed. Within the first, it was a brand new, it, it is a brand new van. Within the first 600 miles, it was the check engine light was going off and no one could fix it. And uh, it's a Mercedes Sprinter. So there's only a couple places that are like established. Um, yeah, there's like five Sprinter, actual Mercedes Benz Sprinter places that'll work on them. Especially so like, when you when you buy it new, you got to deal with them. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so we, yeah. yeah, I was like brand new. We just left uh, San Diego. We're heading to Arizona, and like the light comes on, and I'm just like, no flipping way. I just spent like seventy thousand dollars on this van. I was like, it shouldn't be breaking down six hundred <laughs> miles in, you know. So we take it to like the Tucson, like yeah, dealership, like the Mercedes like uh, Sprinter dealership, and they're pretty much just like, yeah, you got to like pay for it. And I'm like, there's no like warranty. 
like this isn't under warranty and i was like two thousand dollars for the water pump and they're like but it might not be that it might be this other part and i'm like dude i just bought this thing it has like 600 miles on it right now like uh, and so we, we just like we just yeah. drove off and yeah. we drove for five months with the check engine light on all across the country and yeah came right back to the san diego the took it in and, yeah it was just it's just an electronic <laughs> these cars are too electronic now mm-hmm. so it was just like a little electronic sensor i think that was making it it was the deaf was fluid tank oh. it was just was broken and so the sensor was just kind Whatever of like that is. yeah well I it's know. just like yeah it's to keep our band you couldn't fix it <laughs> Oh, right? Let me touch it it was under there you go. Yeah, yeah they would see your fingerprints on it and go, wait a second, warranty's yeah. void. Oh, I know, I know. We're talking, this is Car Talk with uh, Kimmy Bitter and the yeah. West Side Twang. Yes, yes. Right here on KSYM. They are playing tonight over at the Lonesome Rose. I think I've mentioned that a few times, but not going to mention it enough. And it was one of the things actually was mentioned in the news in the newspaper. Yes, San Antonio still has a newspaper. That said, things to do this weekend, and you guys were one of them. We were one of them. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So the music, what do you, since you're sort of doing this thing DIY, your music life, what's the, uh, what don't you like about the music business or running your own music industry? Um, I feel like on the road, I... Uh, Sleep is really tough. Um, I it can be a bit overwhelming because you wear so many hats. But I I like the challenge. But I am definitely ready for help. Um, what I don't know. I really do love doing doing music though, and I'm a bit of a control freak. So it, um, it's hard to give up some tasks sometimes. Uh, I don't know. What would you guys say? Do you have anything to chime in? I think the hardest thing is probably uh, finding a balance between, because it's like, I mean, it's like, you know, Kimmy and I, you know, I take care of a lot of the video stuff and Kimmy's doing all the booking and things of that sort. And it's like, by the time we're done doing all our tasks, it's like, oh yeah, we also have to like write music and we also have to like, that's true. You know, so sometimes, you know, it's like I'll spend, you know, I drive. So it's like, we'll spend six hours driving somewhere. It's like, we get there and just set up super quick and it's like and then we play a show and it's just like we packed up you know it's like last night we played a show packed up about it by 9 30 drove two and a half hours to fort stockton and like you got know. pulled over oh yeah by we got yeah patrol. yeah we got pulled over by border <laughs> patrol uh oh yeah 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 which i mean it wasn't it wasn't i'm not super surprised because our our sprinter van's bright yellow and so it's like and we're coming out of big bend which is right on the border of it doesn't yeah. really have windows, so yeah. So it's like, and so like, I, I kind of pull into this town, and like, I see these two cars pull up behind me, and I'm just like, they're gonna pull me over. And so that's like, I'm making sure all my stops are super solid. And it's like, boom, instantly pull this over, and they're just like, you know, asking if we're American citizens, what we're doing, come out of Big Ben. This, you know, it was like midnight, you know. So, but came out unscathed. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> now, do you have, uh, do you have a home base, or is the van it? Home base is is San Diego Oceanside. I spent about six months on the road and six months probably back at home, mostly during the winter. Um, and so half the time home base is Oceanside and the other half it's wherever the town is that week. <laughs> well, and that's sort of an, uh, that takes some practice or getting used to just basically running a business while you're on the road. Totally. I mean, you know, I could just take a nap in the back, but no, I've got to, do some blogging or do or you know social media stuff or whatever you have to do definitely and finding like adequate internet is a struggle like out one there that, you were you didn't <laughs> no, find anything no, out there no way i'm super behind right now i have a lot i feel like i, think I have 52 emails in my inbox right well now. you can <laughs> hang out here for a while and you yeah. <laughs> suck up our bandwidth here yeah, for yeah. a while for sure now what i understand is you really didn't start delving in the music or playing guitar till about 18 19 something yeah, like that. Yeah. I was a, I was a late bloomer for sure. Um I got my first guitar in 3rd grade. I wanted to be just like Jewel. And uh and but this was like pre-internet when I got my first guitar and my parents didn't give me lessons and so I just could not figure out how to teach myself. And so I I shelved it and then when I turned 18 and now internet is around and I basically just use ultimateguitar.com and try to like 
teach myself how to play. I'm not the greatest guitarist by any means. I'm just a chord girl. But I learned it so I could learn how to songwrite and to have something to accompany me with singing. So, right, yeah. right. What uh, what is the uh, what's the music scene in your area up there in California? What's it like? California is cool. Um, I mean, LA's. I've had a lot of fun in, in LA the last couple years. Um, my hometown treats me really good. San Diego is always good to me. Um, and I don't know what I, I would mean, say. It's like the scene's super varied. I mean, I feel yeah. like we had like metal was huge for a while. Then it was like post punk, and then it was like reggae and like ska has always been like a huge part of the San Diego sound. I would feel like, and then I would say in the last couple of years, all of a sudden, like you know, Americana has been the all the punk rockers, you know, yeah. started wearing jeans and cowboy hats. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, but there are venues to play. There's it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a good yes. You don't have to. You can, you can create a band there and actually play in your in that town. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a massive, massive city for sure. I mean, we like yeah, we almost entirely played San Diego County for a couple of years, like just exclusively years, just yeah. playing every weekend. Sure. Just in our, our county. Well, it's a little closer than Terlingua. I yeah. know. <laughs> Terlingua is awesome. We played the that little Starlight so Theater. And it was, uh, that is, like I told you, I, my favorite New Year's Eve was one year at the Starlight Theater for yeah. sure. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. It took me by surprise. I was not, I had n- really small expectation. Thursday night in the middle of nowhere, and it was such a blast. <laughs> yeah, packed. I mean, really great great crowd. I mean, people were there. I mean, we sold a ton of merch. like ton of CDs. A lot of, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, hopefully yeah. a lot of people are coming out to uh we just met a lot of people like from houston from dallas and they're looking to come to our, our next set of shows so cool cool can we play one more and Let's then we'll it. uh play one more track off the cd Sounds and good. let y'all get out of here it's a song called cowboy kind of girl Right from the start, I've always been a cowboy kind of girl. I got a country heart, as down home as many pearl. I got no sympathy for the symphony. I like a man who listens to
Yeah. I actually had that one queued up. I was like, I want to play another track off the CD, but you did it live. (laughs) And you know, it sounds just as good live as it does from that uh, studio there. Talking to Kimmy Bitter and the West Side Twang playing tonight over at the Lonesome Rose Showtime. I think 9.30. Did we say that? Is that right? I think it's 9. 9. Yeah, get there at 9. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, you'll be there. That's a fun place there. Uh, Contact. What's your, is it KimmyBitter.com? What's the deal? Uh, Yeah, KimmyBitter.com. That's where you can find our music, our tour dates. And then we're on all the socials. Kimmy Bitter, K-I-M-M-I. B-I-T-T-E-R, like the taste. There you go. So um, what music are you listening to in the van? Or do Ooh. you? Or do you? Oh, well, we actually did, we started doing Spotify jams, which is like uh, anyone can add to the playlist, and it was kind of an eclectic uh, assortment of music today. Uh, what were the songs you were throwing in there, Kimmy? Um, I mean, I had a little Connie Francis in there. Um what? Oh, man, it's uh, the, the Knock Three Times song. <laughs> yeah, Ben threw in some uh, Paul McCartney and Wings. I remember that. And then um, what else were we jamming? It was a lot. It was four hours of music. <laughs> Come on, Ben. Like Come on, blur. Ben. Oh, gosh, now it's all on me? I know, yeah. Oh, you man. haven't said much yet. This is true. I don't need to say much. Or, <laughs> see, but, then I say, but then some people I talk to, they're like, Everybody's listening to their own thing. No one's. No, we were all singing along. We were like having a really yeah. Well, like good a, old time. I'd say like four days ago, we were just jamming like women, women and music. Dion. Celine Dion. Uh, yeah, uh, Shania Twain. Uh, all the, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's a new theme every day, but today was very '60s, which is my favorite theme. Yeah, it was like so. Joe Cocker was in there. Who else was? No, there? there you Janis go. Joplin. Janis Joplin. Yeah. yeah. Some zombies. Zombies. Yeah, uh, of course, of course, yeah, exactly. And there is some, yeah, symf- symphonic music. That's how we got pulled over last night. Was we were listening to orchestral music, <laughs> and they were like, like "Wait down. a minute, yeah. these people are suspicious." <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, the definitely. Few got us. All right. Well, thank you very much. We spent a lot of time with you guys. I appreciate you very much. Thanks. Uh, much. Thanks. It's great new. It's great to get. New music. Our radio show has been on since 1991, so we've got a lot of stuff. We still believe in real country, and uh, it's hard to find these days, wow. for sure. And you'll be around for South by Southwest, is yes. that correct? Correct. So I'll be up there. I'll have to get more information yeah, on that yeah. later. Uh, Saturday. Friday. Yeah. Friday. Okay. Friday the 15th, we play at noon at Arlen Studios. Oh. Yes. Must be a official gig or something. It's not official, but it's a really cool yeah. showcase. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to get more info yes. on that one because yeah, I'm gonna be running around. All right, I got queued up. Ba, 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 ba. Number six. What do we got? Vag- Vagabond blues. Vagabond What's the, any blues. setup to that? <laughs> any setup to that? No. Vagabond blues. Uh, yeah. I mean, we just live quite a bit of a vagabond lifestyle, so we wrote a song just about that. There you go. Kimmy Bitter and West Side Twang tonight at Lonesome Rose. And you can get that brand new CD, Old School, from them this evening. Once again, thanks, folks. Thank you. Thanks for Appreciate making you. it here. <laughs> Made it it's on a time. long drive. That's a long <laughs> drive. And at least the popos didn't uh, keep you too long. Yeah. I know. Glad I had my papers this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks. Yeah.